Okay, so today I tried this iOS 26 on my iPhone as daily phone, basically used it as regular thing for shopping and everything else. Let me share with you my opinion and experience with it. If we talk about the photography, among the unusual features I've tried, the spatial scene feature stands out the most. It makes your photos look 3D. With the background replacement and tracking, it gives a very high quality 3D effect. It works on older photos and even with the photos from other phones or pro cameras. It looks incredible and adds this wow factor to any image which you can use later as wallpaper. There is this glass design. It does give this transparency effect, but it does not look like glass to me. It's more like jello, transparent jello maybe. It looks a little bit overwhelming. Too many details, all those gradients, highlights, how the light refracts from those icons just create a little bit more visual pollution to my eyes. And of course, this iOS 26 liquid glass design is available in both dark and day mode, which are given much different vibes. For the longest time ever, I switched into all white mode and I think it's finally looking good. Although the incoming notifications are sometimes really hard to read. So while the liquid glass design definitely looks nice, but from functional standpoint, takes getting used to. Probably very few of you know about this feature, but I use it every day ever since iPhone 7 Plus is out. It's called assistive touch and I love it. Well, with this liquid glass, I'm not able to see it almost ever. I mean, the glass is transparent, so it makes sense that you cannot see it, but in bright mode, it's too much. In dark mode, however, it's more manageable and visible and it actually looks good reflecting the icons underneath it. But after a few seconds have passed, it becomes invisible again. Looks, yeah, cool, transparent, but at the same time, it's just there's a lot of happening over here. And what I noticed right away the battery life just drains super quickly you know i'm taking pride in this phone that i've been using it since september since it launched and my battery health is at 100 percent even though i had quite a lot of cycles i think this is impressive but after this ios 26 was installed on this phone i'm afraid that i will lose that 100 pretty soon and talking about the battery what's cool here i can see when i charge the phone how much time i have to wait until the battery is charged to the fullest Finally, huge thumbs up for that. The screenshots interface has been updated too. You can take multiple screenshots and edit them easily. Or you can ask ChatGPT about what's on the screen. After it gives you a reply, you can follow up with the next question. And if you circle around different subjects, you can also search online for a specific object or product. Also, it's a little bit easier to see connected Bluetooth and Wi-Fi devices. Now, another really cool feature coming with this iOS 26 update is live transcriptions when you have a call through FaceTime. And at first glance, it might be not a big deal for a lot of people, but if you have someone in your family who has troubles hearing, especially in loud places, this really helps, especially for someone like grandmas. You know, they always have troubles and problems hearing you. You have to yell all the time. So finally, you can have everything written right on the screen. And how accurate it is, you might ask. Well, you can judge yourself. Let me know in the comments if everything is transcribed correctly. And also there is an option to even translate everything what you say. So this is really useful and helpful. Hopefully you can hear me loud and clear, but if not, you can also read everything right on the screen. So let me know what you think about this feature. I know it was present on some Android phones before, but finally it is here and FaceTime works really nice and fast even when the internet speed is not up to date because I have problems sometimes when I call with the video connection like this one through Telegram or some other apps, but FaceTime is always fast and snappy somehow it just works. So having this live transcription on the screen is really helpful, I think. But what I'm most interested in is obviously camera app. So let's launch it and see what's new. So right away, you can see that the icon for the camera app is different. So let's see if there is manual mode. Yeah, I'm talking to you like if there is manual mode, like I've not tried it yet. Of course, that was the first thing I did, guys. The switch between photo and video. That's it. There is nothing else. In photo mode, we can change between different resolutions, 24 megapixels or 48 megapixels, which is really nice. I hate it going into the settings where you have Wi-Fi, where you have Apple AD, all that kind of stuff. And you have to search for camera. And then within those settings, you have to adjust your resolution. That was really crazy. So finally it is here as it should be. And I think there is no better interface for camera as on Android phones. Yeah, like S25 Ultra, it has everything, man. There is like a camera assist, there is a anamorphic support built in. This is wild. So maybe we'll find something similar over here. I don't know, let's see. So if we press on this icon over here, we get this menu and you can see how the animation glitches. So that's what I was talking to you about, guys. 
everything is a little bit stuttery there is no this like fluidity and probably this is why this battery is just drained super quickly i'll put over here on the screen by the way how much better it was on this phone i need to check the footage when we started recording and at the end of this video because of this animation we'll find out flash live photo timer basically everything that was there already is just redesigned so there is no really functional improvements or new features there is none of that there is no manual mode no at least white balance adjustment or i don't know at least something no there is nothing it's just they moved those icons around or made them within a certain folder or menu like here and yeah you have night mode available maybe a little bit quicker and faster you can access it but other than that everything is pretty much the same so within the video mode we get in the left upper corner the resolution selection which is nice hd 4k there are rumors that iphone 17 pro will have 8k for me personally all this footage that you see right now on the screen was filmed in manual mode 4k 30 or 4k 60 and it looks amazing guys i wish that apple just merged what is available on the blackmagic camera app or some other third-party camera apps and just added it over here in the manual mode just make it tab don't make it too prominent if you're afraid of like you know grandmas or some people who want to use iphone but would get confused with those settings just make a little bit i don't know like a button that they will never find out about and just make it accessible for us filmmakers so i could capture this kind of footage on the iphone natively without third-party apps all those unnecessary actions and also the same thing as in the photo mode if we press on the right upper corner we get the selection of few options here flash exposure and action mode yeah we have lens switch and that's about it now what if you want to turn portrait mode well now it's not visible here swipe like so turn on the portrait mode or select different settings here so there is no customizing here i cannot remove this mode completely so for me if i had a choice for sure i would swap the spatial mode for a manual mode that would support anamorphics that would support log recording in smaller file size so apple if you are listening you still have time so please add manual mode instead of the spatial or add it somewhere you know in the back end so we can activate it add anamorphic support 1.33 squeeze log recording in smaller file size do not make it exclusive to prores it's huge it's unnecessary big for me h265 codec is just enough and for most of the filmmakers to get this footage guys can you imagine this was filmed on the phone so apple if you want us filmmakers and iphone users to capture more footage like this well you have to make it available please and within the portrait mode the same way we press over here we can adjust the aperture which will control the depth of field blur background all the kind of stuff so you can switch between different aspect ratio but i will keep it four by three to utilize larger sensor area and that's about it pretty much for the camera interface if you have any questions let me know down in the comments and i'll make sure to cover it in my next video and make sure to subscribe so you will not miss the new iphone 17 pro review on this channel see you and don't forget to hit the like button